Lord, we just thank you for your word. And Father, we just say, speak to us. In the next remaining moments that we have this morning, would you just sharpen your, your word to speak to us, to challenge us, to provoke us, to be the men and women that you have called us to be in you. We ask this in your name. Amen. Love this story. Because if you picture this story of uh, Elisha meeting with some men, in fact, basically this is like a men's small group kind of happening here. And they needed a bigger place because it was just too tight. So they decided to go down by the River of Jordan to actually create some shelters so they could spend extended time talking about God and learning more about him. And so Elisha decided to go with them as they were going to build this area, meeting area down by the river. And as one of them is chopping down trees, this would make America's Funniest Home Videos, I guarantee you. As he's bringing it back, that axe head goes flying off into the river. And the River Jordan is a muddy, in fact, it's one of the dirtiest rivers in the entire Middle East, even to this day. That you barely put your hand down in there, it disappears because it's so mucky and dirty and muddy. And so I am sure, even though it doesn't share it in Scripture here, if you just put it in even a little bit like today's standard, when that axe head went in the river they had to say dude sorry for you but it is lost <laughs> good you're not going to go in that river and find it it's a lost cause like uh my golf game <laughs> if it goes in the water or if it goes in the rough it's gone um that axe head is gone and isn't it amazing what happens as we read there today how god used his power and his might and why what made the axe head so significant? That's what we're going to discover. Why is this passage here? There's three reasons why uh, God just began. Uh, there's more than that, but just some reasons why I just looked at this passage. Why is that passage there? One is God wanted to let us know that every part of our life is significant. Every part. Even the embarrassing moments that we all had. Even the discouraging moments that we've all had in life where we can look back to some of the real, I don't want to say embarrassing, but shameful moments that we've had. The moments that we probably have not shared all those moments, even with our closest person in our life, because they're too shameful to talk about, too embarrassing, too dirty, too shameful. Even those moments, even some of the moments that we have each day that we don't even give a second thought to, we just go through them, and in fact, we, we might think of something even at the moment, but then another moment, we just forget about it. God looks at every single part of our life as significant. He wants us to be reminded that he's watching that. He's a part of every single moment of our life. Isn't that awesome? To know we've got a God that cares for every single part. Even when we're mortified and we want to cover our head. <laughs> Um, when you're naked up on a roof, somehow God's got a plan for that. <laughs> um, so it was really good. Um, but we all have embarrassing moments. In fact, he told me one of his, he had a lapel mic. <laughs> and he forgot to shut it off, and the sound people forgot to mute it. He went to the restroom, and so he's talking to everybody in there. They heard the flush. <laughs> it was funny. And that, it also, you know, we all have bad days, don't we? Even in the midst of those, God looks at them as significant. Why? Because you know what? Some of our bad days and how we've gone through it, how God helps us to get through it, will become a handle for other people to know how they can trust God for their issues. That's why the more of a transparent life we can live, not only before God, but before our neighbors, where they just see us as us, not where we put on a mask of feeling that we have it all together or we're more spiritual, but we just keep trusting God. And they see that authenticity. You know what? To a generation of teenagers, they will listen. They will come to you every single time. Because the biggest thing that they look for in, for adults is can I trust them? And time and consistency will win that course every single day. Same thing with your neighbor. Before they know, they want to know about your God, they want to know how much you really care genuinely about them. Secondly, why is this passage here? God wants us to know that his power is available for every part whenever we're going through some of those rough moments. His power is there to spare, more than enough power. Because I, I grew up in western Nebraska, and I'll tell you this, we don't have the top flightest <laughs> schools. Um, you know, it, but 
I did go through the class in science where you did the experiments of sinking and floating. You know, I know sponges float, wood floats, iron sinks. Watched it. Did it several times. It sinks like a rock, like a rock. <laughs> it sinks. <laughs> uh, we did that experiment. And yet, isn't it amazing? What did Elisha do? He asked this gentleman, where did you lose this? Walks right to that area, cuts a piece of stick off, throws it in the river. The iron head came right up to the surface. See, God wants you to know that all those things that we would think would be an embarrassing thing, God will rise it to the surface to be able to bring glory to him if we allow it. It can become a testimony of his power at work in our life. Our steps of faith to trust him, even in those shameful moments, those embarrassing moments, he'll be there the trying moments. So no matter some of the things you might be facing today, it could be financial issues, marital issues, just things with the family, just things with life. Maybe it's the neighbor across the street just driving you nuts. I've got a neighbor across our street. He's really funny. Like even with it being eight degrees, I would guarantee you if I could get home today in enough time <laughs> where there's still sunlight, I could probably see him walk out of his house in his wife beater t-shirt. You know, it's that tank top t-shirt. You know, I'd wave at him, he'll belch back. <laughs> you know, I have Miller Lite. And I can never figure it out, Miller Lite, and yet, oh, you know, anyway. Um, but it, you know, you, you think that they don't care or have any concerns about the things of God, and yet the amazing part is when you develop a relationship, then they start to get connected with curious about God. Because as they have that friendship and relationship with you, then they're willing to feel free to talk and ask the question. Are we willing to say, God, let your power be at work in every part of my life? And thirdly, why is this outrageous passage here? It's to remind us that this is for everybody. Every single person in here, and this has been the amazing part for me, is how many adults, how many of us have lived life with regrets of what you get to a certain point, you can look back 10, 15 years and go, boy, I wish I would have done this. I wish I had done that. I've been making it a mission to say, I'm going to live my life without any regrets because of things I wish I had done. I'd rather live with the regrets because of the choices I made. I want to be on the proactive wave on that proactive side is being able to look back 20 years from my life and say, man, I want to have lived my life to the fullest and have no regrets over the choices. I made. I want to be able to look that way. And in fact, that's a huge reason why we step, took this step of faith, is to be able that was part of that choice. And see, God wants us to know that he'll be there for you in every single way, that his power is for every single person. Because isn't it amazing when you hear testimonies? So many times you could be in a service like this, you hear of God doing maybe a physical touch in somebody, but you immediately begin to disconnect yourself by going, but that can't happen for me. Because they don't know my story. They don't know all the things I've gone through. They don't, somehow, we begin to look at ourselves and say, there's no way God could do this for me. There's just no way. Or there's no way, I get this a lot from some teenagers, there's just no way God can use me. Because, because of the things in my past, I don't think my friends would listen. There's just no way, because of my personality, I'm shy. There's no way I can make a stand on my campus for Christ. Because I'm just, I have a hard enough time just saying hello. And yet God's wanting to say, if you fully give yourself to me, this is for everybody.